Welcome to Driven Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera is Matt, as always. I don't know about you guys, but for me as a luthier, one of the biggest questions that I get from folks on a regular basis are guitar players who go, hey, can I come over sometime, spend an hour, and you can teach me how to do setup work? Not just so that that person can learn how to set up their own guitar, but because they're interested in maybe making a little bit of extra money. And another thing is I know that a lot of luthiers actually got into building guitars that route as well. They got into it from doing basic setups and then repairs and then learning how to build. So what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna list a bunch of tools that you could buy with a small investment of money and then you can turn that into up to $60 an hour uh, worth of income. All right, the first thing that we need to do is talk about the tools. What I'm gonna do in this little segment is we're gonna list what I would consider the bare minimum tools to do this job. What we have in front of us is roughly about $300 to $350 worth of tooling. And I know that it doesn't look like much, but uh, these are the bare minimum, which you absolutely will need. This one right here is the big chunk, of, the largest chunk of your money, uh, believe it or not, is just a straight edge. And on paper, it looks like you could use just about anything. But what we would recommend is that you get a high quality machine straight edge. You're gonna need that um, because your setup is only gonna be as accurate as the machining job done on said straight edge. So this one is the, uh, the Stumac, I believe this is the 18 inch one. I don't know, it's been 15 years since I bought it. But uh, you'll need that. The next thing that you are going to need is a set of at least feeler gauges. I don't use these, and I'll explain why in a minute, but feeler gauges, they're gonna get you by. Um, this is what you're gonna use to tell how high string action is in many situations. You will then need, you don't need, but I would recommend this little magic thing right here. This is, Matt and I just, bought, what did we just buy four of these? Mm -hmm. uh, we lost. we had one and then it was never around whenever you yeah. needed it. And you're like, where's the, where's the string lifter? Oh, this is the easiest thing in the world to lose. Uh, but if you don't have it, oh my God, you'll need it. So this is, uh, you put it underneath the string and use it to lift it up out of the nut slot. Uh, game changer right here. You're gonna need that. If you're doing mostly acoustic guitars, I definitely would recommend getting a bridge pin puller. This is the only way to really pull out bridge pins without risking damaging the bridge with a pair of pliers. Uh, another really big important to the part of the equation here is going to be some sort of string height gauge. Uh, and in this case, I'm just using the Stumac one. This is the Imperial one. I have this in both Imperial and Metric. Uh, we also did that with that Fret Guru one mm -hmm. a couple of months ago that's on Amazon. So there's a lots of versions of these, but you will need one of these. Um, you're going to need definitely a truss rod wrench. That's gonna be very important. But what I would recommend is not just a truss rod wrench. I would probably buy at least four or five different truss rod wrenches for the type of guitars that you expect to come through your shop. Um, if you're doing mostly electrics, you're gonna to wanna to get one to do tellies, to do Les Pauls, to do Stratocasters, uh, different generations of those. Um, if you're doing mostly acoustics, you're gonna to wanna to get some to do, um, you know, the ones that, that you do with the headstock for Taylor and Gibson, as well as Martin's, um, the five millimeter um, through the sound hole truss rod wrenches. So, gets you a little assortment of those. And the last thing that you'll need is a set of nut slotting files. You won't need these ones, because these are the expensive diamond ones. These are, God, what are these, Matt? These are like 120 bucks per. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're proud of them. So you don't good need reason. this. They're amazing, uh, but you will need some sort of uh, gauged nut slotting files if you're going to do just electrics. Get yourself a nice broad range to do kind of you know light gauge strings up to heavies. If you're doing mostly acoustics, do the same thing. If you're doing acoustics and electrics, you're going to want an even broader range of these. So. What I'm getting at is, like I said, it's about a $350 investment, um, but your mileage is gonna vary depending on, you know, kind of the scope of tools that you want, uh, anticipating the type of instruments are gonna come through your shop. With that, I'm going to also show you a little bit more uh, higher end tooling that I actually would recommend if you really wanna take this seriously and say, hey, I'm looking to start this as a true side hustle so that I can bring in some extra income. And God knows we can all use a little extra income. Uh, so what we are going to do is show you this, which has been featured prominently in many of our Driftwood videos, but this is the, um, the neck relief gauge. This is a, like a hundred and something, almost $200. We'll put a link in the video. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna give you a much more uh, higher level of accuracy over just a straight edge and feeler gauges. We'll show you why. Um, you're gonna want that if you wanna take it up to the next level. The same sort of thing, but this is for your nut uh, string height. This is uh, just a dial caliper for doing that. They no longer sell it in this um, 
analog version. They only have it in digital. So, but this thing here, absolutely love it. Those two things alone that I just showed you are gonna take your setups to a much more accurate level. The last thing that I would recommend is the, what do we call this, Matt? What should we? <laughs> we call it the nut race car, but the I nut race car. Yeah, um, it, it has. It, it definitely has. I actual, hear you laughing. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has a name. Um, it, has a na it has a name, but it is for um, putting your nuts and saddles inside of it so that you can sand them down with a high level of accuracy. I will say this almost is not optional if you're going to be doing a lot of um, shaving down of the saddles on guitars that have piezo pickups underneath them. This is what's going to allow you to get a perfectly flat bottom to that saddle so that you don't mess up the um, contact surface. The contact right? surface. Yeah. Isn't that Matt giving Lou your advice? I just love it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It'll make you blush. <laughs> uh, one thing I almost forgot, this is for the basics too. You're going to want one of these. Uh, this is just to chuck inside your electric drill and allow you to be able to uh, take the strings on and off because God knows if you're starting to do setup work, that's you're going to spend your whole life taking strings off and putting strings on. Um, but that is kind of the basic rundown on the tools that you're going to need just to get your foot in the door to do setup work. So with that, what we'll do is I'm going to kind of go over where this particular guitar sits and why we need to do a setup on it and how we'll go about doing it. Almost forgot. I almost forgot. Uh, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but if you're going to do this, if you're starting from scratch, get this Guitar Player's Repair Guide by Mr. Dan Erlewine, the legend. The, the man, the myth. The, the man, legend. the myth. The dude's got his own friggin' mugs. Like, he's got, like, hats and stuff at Stumac now. Like, shout out to Dan. This book is incredible. You'll need this. Um, instead of going to the internet to figure out, okay, how high was I supposed to take this and how low am I supposed to go there? This has got all of those things inside of it. Um, the factory specs from Martins for Fender Stratocasters, all of those things, uh, and much, much, much more. Um, we'll put a link to that in the video as well. But yeah, didn't wanna, didn't wanna leave without mentioning Dan's book, so go get one of these too. Okay, obviously we need to talk about the victim for this episode. What we have here is a Breedlove Discovery Concert model guitar that we bought uh, a week ago to use in a future breakdown video. We're excited to put... Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. We are very excited to put this one under the knife and to play it and see how it sounds and all of those things. But the first thing that we noticed when we pulled this out of the box is that the action on it is, to be honest, horrendous. It's one of the worst setups I've ever seen on a guitar out of the box. That will be noted in the guitar breakdown review. But in the meantime, before we even can see how the guitar sounds, have to get it to the point where it actually plays halfway decent so we figured that's why we're gonna make this video for you guys we have to do a setup on it let's show you guys how to do it so what we're gonna do is just kind of uh, take an initial assessment of the guitar see where the truss rod is see where the string height is where the nut and the saddle is and give you guys a baseline of where we're starting out and then we're gonna do the things that we need to do to the instrument to bring everything to where we need to and then we can see where we started and where we ended up. All right, so we're gonna take the string height gauge and what we do is you're gonna take one of these and you're gonna to go to the, on an acoustic guitar, you're gonna to go to the 12th fret and then you're gonna measure it. I'm gonna turn it around so I can see it for just a second. I'm gonna come down here, holy cow. <laughs> um, it's not even reading on the gauge, it's so high. So I'm gonna <laughs> spin this thing around uh, and I'll show you guys here in just a second. Uh, it is like 140 thousandths. Uh, no, it's like 150 thousandths. Yeah, uh, is how high the strings are. Yeah, we can't really get it to show up on camera because it's too small. But yes, the action is incredibly high. Uh, 150 thousandths across the board here at the 12th fret. That's how high it is from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret. So that gap right between those two, um, that's what we're measuring. On an electric guitar, um, instead of doing it at the 12th fret, you're gonna wanna do that at like the 15th or 17th fret. Um, that's because usually the neck joint on an electric guitar is much further down. A lot of times you even have more frets. So acoustic, 12th fret, electric, you're gonna do it at the 15th to 17th fret. But what we have is, like I said, 150 thousandths string height here. What we really wanna be getting at that at is about, uh, 80 to 65 thousandths. I know that we're using all metric here, or I know that we're using all imperial here, but uh, that's just what I use for doing setups, so I apologize. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is measure the height of the action at the first fret. I'm going to use this nut string height gauge. Um, for those of you that are looking to do this cheaper, you actually would use um, feeler gauges. So I'll show you how you would do that with feeler gauges. Um, we'll just grab one here and you just slide that underneath Let's bring it over here so hopefully you guys can see a little better. 
you'll just take this and slide it so that you can tell where it's at. And so on this one, it's about 40 thousandths. I will now use this gauge and tell you what it actually is. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, see, it actually is a little lower than that. Well, no, it's actually dead on at 40 thousandths. Like 39 thousandths of an inch is where we're at. Mind you, it's at 39 thousandths. Really, we wanted about 12. <laughs> so it's, it's quite a bit off. Uh, and then the other thing that we'll do is we're gonna measure how much relief is inside of this neck at the fifth fret. And holy cow, let me zero this out real fast. That can't be right. Okay, so we're gonna measure the, the relief in this neck at the fifth fret. Okay, that is the big part of the problem, but uh, this is at 17 thousandths of an inch of neck relief at the fifth fret. Uh, weirdly, we wanted it about five to 10, depending on uh, how you like to do your guitar. So what we know is that we have incredibly high action at the saddle, we have incredibly high action at the nut, and we also have too much relief in the neck. So what I can do now is uh, decide what I want to do to get the action to where I want it. Okay, so we did the uh, measure the truss rod relief with the relief gauge, but if you guys don't want to spend that kind of money, which I totally understand, you're gonna to want to do that with a straight edge instead. And the way that you'll do that is using, putting your straight edge right in the middle of the fretboard, then taking <laughs> your feeler gauges and coming in here and actually measuring it at the fifth or seventh fret. I swear to God. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Okay, there it is. All right, so we'll take this on here and we're actually going to come down here and put a feeler gauge at, you know, the fifth, seventh fret in that area. And that actually fits a little too easily. Uh, so that one right there was 16 thousandths. So we'll probably go up to 18 thousandths. See, I've actually never done this way before. Yeah, that's it right there. 18 thousandths at the seventh fret. Yeah, so a lot, a lot. And uh, I'll show you like the deficiency for me on this one is this gauge or this feeler gauge set only goes down to 16 thousandths of an inch. Um, so I'd actually need to get another feeler gauge set that goes down to like three thousandths, two thousandths in order for me to measure it the way that I want to. That's why I use this gauge. But so you can see how just with those basic tools, we were able to kind of get, get a broad assessment of this guitar, see uh, what needs to be adjusted. Now, this is not gonna be a video on necessarily the intricacies of how to do really specific setups. I did a video about two years ago on how to get your guitar uh, dialed in and I go in broad detail very good detail about like the different things that can affect action on your guitar whether it is uh, the saddle height or the nut height the neck relief and how those things are all connected to one another and one adjustment here can change the thing there because there's a whole lot uh, but what we're <laughs> um, so you'll go check out that video if you're looking for more of that 30,000 foot view how to do a setup and we'll put a link up here so that you guys can see that but um, we are gonna give you a rundown of how I'm setting up this guitar um, so what we're gonna do now is the truss rod. I always start, always, always, always start with a truss rod. So what we're gonna do is get my truss rod wrench, my neck relief gauge, and I'm gonna straighten this neck out to the point where I'm happy with it. And for me, I know that I like to have my necks eh, between four and seven thousandths of an inch. And some luthiers are gonna comment and go, oh my God, that's ridiculous, that's not enough. I don't care. This is how I do it. <laughs> you do you. I'll do me. <laughs> this is how I like to get my guitars dialed in. I like the way your guitars play. That's right. All right, so I'm going to set this bad boy on here. And you can see the, how it's off. I know that it looks backwards, right? You're looking at, what does it say, Matt? <laughs> what is it even reading? It's reading 85. 85. So remember, that's backwards. So what we're really seeing is 15 thousandths of an inch of neck relief is really what you're seeing there. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to tighten the truss rod. Where are we at now? About 10? Um, about 13. Jeez, this thing is... Is it doing anything? Yeah, yeah, it's getting there. You're at 11 now. Dude, I've never seen a truss rod just as much. At like seven now. Okay. 
We don't call that good. Okay, so a little bit of a little bit of work there, more than expected, but we were actually 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 <laughs> we were actually able to half the uh, this, the neck relief on this guitar. We went from about fifteen thousandths to seven. Uh, I had to do a lot more turns on the truss rod to get it to do what I wanted to. Um, I think that that is just a fact of having a cheaper truss rod inside of this guitar. It's only a three hundred dollar guitar, so you can only expect so much. But you know, a couple of turns on there, we got it dialed in. Um, so what we'll do now is see where our string height is. You'll see that there's probably going to be a significant difference in string height already without us doing anything else. That is why I do my truss rod first. I guess if you take away anything on the how-to portion of this video is if you're going to start doing setups, truss rods first. Always, always, always. So let's see what we have now for our string height at the 12th fret. All right, so we're at uh, 120 thousandths uh, string uh, string height at the 12th fret on this guitar. I can't see that. Yeah, yeah I can't see it, but that's all right. But yeah. So that feels good. We're, we are a crap ton closer to where we want to be already. I can probably already just feel the guitar. Yeah, it's out of tune. You can hear it. That's how much we've basically we've pulled that neck and straightened it out enough that it stretched out those strings and changed how the guitar sounds. So what we'll do is I'm actually going to tune it again. You always want to make sure the guitar is in tune when you're making adjustments. Let's see. Yeah, that didn't change. All right, the next thing that I want to do on this guitar is I'm actually going to lower the action ever so slightly at the nut, and then we're going to do, uh, in this particular case, we're going to have to pull this saddle out and actually lower it down. But before we do that, I want to get this nut as low as we can before we move over to the saddle, and then we should be kind of already almost done with it. So, um, like I said, we measured all of the uh, the string heights at the nut. Once again, I'm using the fancier version, but we are at 10, 20, 35 thousandths of an inch, up to 40 thousandths of an inch of relief, or, or of height between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. And we really want to get that about halved, uh, 20 thousandths to, at the low E to about 12 thousandths at the high E. So, fancy. String lifter. Let's show the folks at home how awesome this thing is. So in order to get this string out of here, normally you'd have to like really pull it out like this and it's a pain in the butt. But with this thing, you can just come like this and go whoop, and it's out of the way. And now we can actually attack this uh, fret slot. And we will take this. Ever so lightly, you don't wanna. You don't want to go too much here. You can always sand more, uh, but you don't ever want to go too much. And we're just going to start working our way down from the high E. Boom. That's about 20 thousandths. That's more than I would normally do, but I'm not going to get this thing perfect. And then we'll do the B string. You can see how quick this is going. Kind of a function of having better tools though, right? It is. Honestly, like this whole thing is a function of having not only better tools, but the experience to know what to do, what not to do. Um, so my whole premise here in this video, right, is what you can make up to $60 an hour. I say that because you can charge, you know, I would say between $45 uh, and $75 to do a setup on a guitar. And that's what we're doing here, a basic setup. Um, and it's fast for me because I've done it a hundred million times. Um, but when you first start doing this, you're obviously not going to be as fast, so know that going into it. Um, but the more you do it, the quicker you're going to get, the more you're going to have better tools, and you can start really turning and burning instruments with this, I'm telling you. Uh, you really could get to the point, once word gets out in your town that you're doing setup work, if you have like a highly active music community or people who play instruments, um, you, could be, you could do 10 of these a day, man. I mean, and you're making 600 bucks a day doing setup work. That takes a while to get to that point, but this is just really easy stuff. And I, and I, I wanna encourage anybody that's out there who's ever thought about doing it to like, don't be scared. <laughs> get in there and try it, man. Uh, now I will say the risks. The risks are, sorry, I'm trying to do setup and talk at the same time. The risks are that um, you mess up a nut, you mess up a saddle, you go too low on one of those, and then you're suddenly going to be in a position where you're not learning how to do setups, you're learning how to like manufacture nuts and saddles. 
that's a whole nother can of worms. But just know that. So with that known, really take your time if you're gonna lower the action, just very carefully take bites at the apple until you get the action to where you want it. So that you don't end up now suddenly losing money on the deal because now you gotta make a nut in a saddle. Um, let's see here. So a good example too of what's going on here. Uh, I might have gone a little too low on that one. Woo, buddy, that's low. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I went, yeah, well, you know what? Let's do it. Let's show them what I did. I went a little too low on the, the uh, G string there. Um, I'm at, gosh, I am at not even, I'm at like 8 thousandths of an inch. Now it's not buzzing. The reason it's not buzzing is because I still haven't lowered the action on the saddle yet. So um, you're not gonna notice it until we lower the action on the saddle. Suddenly that G string is just gonna be like buzzing like crazy in the open position. So what we can do to fix that, A, I think the reason why it happened is important to know is it's because this is a plastic nut. This is a diamond file. I normally work with bone nuts, not plastic nuts. Uh, this bad boy will cut through bone quickly and it cut through plastic even faster and I just wasn't used to it. So that's why it happened. How do we fix it? Nice and easy, right? We pull this G-string back out. We get some super glue. A little super glue in here. Uh, and I'm gonna take my, this is the number 20. Is it, Matt? Is it number 20? <laughs> it should be. It is, it's just uh, yeah, it's, it's stopped up. She stopped up. Must have had a bad dinner last night. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we got a gusher. <laughs> too much cheese. <laughs> too, yeah. Yeah, too, too, too much cheese in your diet will plug, plug it up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. We're going to need some more fiber. <laughs> um, so we got our number 20 with a whip tip on there, and I'm just going to very, very ever so lightly apply a little bit of super glue into that nut slot just to build it ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, bone dust. In this particular case, which you can use at home, is um, just some, uh, some uh, baking, soda, baking right? soda, correct. Um, I just happen to have a pile of bone dust sitting around. Those are my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that in there. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more glue on top. Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks good. A little accelerant on there. Now, here's a little trick. A little trick here is take your string, before I filed that slot back down again, take that string, put it back in the nut slot. I'm just tightening it, losing it, tightening it. I'm just taking that string and I'm dragging it back and forth across that super glue uh, and bone dust. And what it's doing is pushing it down really nice and hard and getting it compact as possible. Uh, a lot of people don't do that and I think that's where they mess up. So we've got that good. Um, now I'm gonna take that same nut slot file and I'm just gonna very lightly run a pass across it real quick. Now it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna put the string back in the slot you can hear it smooth now. We're not getting that clicking, right? Maybe we are. <laughs> All right, so now I can check the string knife on it and get it to where we want. Okay, see, we're really high still. Good. All right, but now we're, we've kind of brought the action back up and now I've got room to come back down again on it. So that's how you do a simple, oops, I messed up. I need to kind of put some more height back on it. Um, so we'll take that again. Took all the great game scores. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> the worst. I, I played with your nut. Oh. <laughs> got lost in the game. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> oh baby. Oh baby. All right, that's where that's where we wanted um, this uh, working title for the video. How, yeah. to, how to play with your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> how to shave your nuts in less than 20 minutes. <laughs> for $60 an hour. <laughs> how to make $60 an hour shaving other people's nuts. <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> I will say, uh, 
like that last one, I didn't even use my my gauge. Uh, if you do this a lot, you get to a point where it becomes, uh, you just feel it. You know uh, what the height needs to be. You don't need to use any measuring devices. Um, that's kind of, it ha takes years to get to that point. Uh, but, so if you're going, he didn't even measure that one. Uh, it's pretty close. <laughs> These friggin' nut files, dude. They're ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Do the A string, do the low E real quick, and we should be at a point where we can take our final assessment um, of the guitar before we do anything down here to the saddle. Yeah, way better. Um, we're gonna tune it again real fast. Cool. Let me just give the old, the old strummy do. Do I have a pick? I do. Uh, just to get a general, you can just see it, it feels better, looks better. Um. Here's your problem. It's close enough to get a feel. Don't judge me, people. So, we have good action down here, kind of like fifth fret and below feels really nice but the action is still incredibly high above especially up here up the neck okay so we're going to measure this down here and see where we are after doing all that so now we are at 110 thousandths of an inch so we're getting much closer uh to where we want to be so now that we know that the neck is straight we know that the nut is where we want it all we need to do is lower the action down here at the saddle i can just look at it and see that it's a little high so what we're going to do is we're going to loosen those strings we're going to pull the saddle out and i'm going to knock it down a little bit um, to get the action down here right um this is one of those intuitive things for me there's like some crazy math equations that you can look up online if you go okay well this is at 110 thousandths of an inch and i want to get it to 80 thousandths of an inch click 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 it'll tell you how much you need to take off of the saddle because math <laughs> yeah trig <laughs> yeah trigonometry yeah. uh i don't do that i don't do the maths uh this becomes intuitive for me i can just look at it and go how much should i take off um so I feel like it would take off about a millimeter off of the saddle and it's going to get us to where we want. I know that I'm switching over to metric now, but that's none of your concern. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to pop that out. I'm going to put it in the nut, the saddle sanding jig. Mm -hmm. Knock that down real quick, put it in, and I think we're going to see that this guitar with just a quick little setup on it is going to be a much, much happier instrument. So let's let me loosen these strings real quick and we'll do that. Okay, so, yeah, this is just a plastic, it might be one of those tusk, tusk ones, but no, it's definitely plastic, I can see the mold lines on it. Just a plastic saddle. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, just my calipers here, and I'm gonna mark what I feel like is the correct amount, uh, about, let's see, let's, what are we gonna do? Let's do, uh, we're gonna do one and a half mil, millimeter off of here, uh, or 60 thousandths. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking that, I put a little bit of a line in it. There we go, there it is. Oh boy. You can see that's where I'm gonna take this thing down to. Okay. Uh, all right, so if you don't have this jig, get yourself some sandpaper, put it on something as flat as possible. I recommend um, a piece of machinery in your shop, whether it's your table saw surface, um, your, drill, your drill press bed, bandsaw bed. If you don't have any of that, if you have granite countertops in your house, you can do it there, um, or your spouse will kill you for getting dust everywhere. Um, I have a special piece of granite that I do this on, and I'm going to put it inside of here. But you would actually just take it by hand very, very carefully uh, and run it back and forth, being careful to keep this um, plumb uh, so that you get a perfect 90 degree angle. Herein lies the problem, though. That's almost impossible to do by hand, whereas this is going to allow us to hold this thing perfect so if we just put this in here uh let me see swear to swear to goodness all right so and then i can just take these two screws and adjust them until we have just there we go so we have just the correct amount showing that i want to sand off yeah buddy 
right there. Tighten these down. You find that this goes faster if you make vroom vroom sounds with your mouth? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Not only vroom vroom sounds, but if you make it like come around corners, like <laughs> things like that. You know, yeah. the use. All right, let me get my granite block. This, is, this, <laughs> was, this weighs 80 pounds. So I just got a um, 100 grit sandpaper on here. And we're just running it back and forth. This is kind of like, the nice thing when you're using this jig is it becomes thoughtless. You literally set it up, and then I just run this back and forth until everything no longer sands anymore. Let's see. There we go. Like, see it's just barely touching. There we go. Um, so you can see how quick that was. It's accurate. Um, it's perfectly square because these bearings in there make it so that it's square. Um, it's perfectly flat because of the granite. These things are seem um, trivial, but they're very, very important to getting it um, the wear the accurate. And especially, especially if you have an under saddle pickup on your guitar, having it perfect like that is going to make a huge difference in how well that pickup works. Um, for the uninitiated, if you were starting to do this and you didn't know any better, you could try to do that by hand on a guitar with a pickup in it, give it back to the client. Client comes to you a day later and is like, dude, what'd you do to my guitar? The pickup, the high E string doesn't even make a sound anymore. And you're, oh my God, I've messed up. The reality of it is, is you don't have a perfectly flat bottom to your saddle. Fun fact. Yeah. So we'll slide that back in there, tune her back up. And I think we should be done. We should be done. For those of you, uh, I guess I should be mentioning here, who are not doing acoustic guitars, you don't need any of that stuff I just showed you. Um, you're just gonna be using um, tiny little Allen Allen screw uh, screwdrivers and Phillips heads and flat tips, and you're gonna adjust the action there with depending on the type of bridge that's on your electric guitar. So in some ways, it's even easier to do if you're looking to do this on electric guitars. I think there's better money to be made in setups on acoustics because it's harder. All right. Okay, so we've got the strings back on, tuned up. Now let's see where the action is on this guitar. Now that we've done the truss rod, the nut, and the saddle. Let's see here. Beautiful. We are a little higher than I would if I was really getting this guitar dialed in perfect. We're at ninety thousandths. 85, 90 thousandths on the low E and about 70 thousandths on the high E. It's just minusculely higher than I would do it if I really wanted to get it absolutely perfect. But it's way better than it was before. Matt has been recording the whole time. And we're, you said, what, 35 minutes? Uh, yeah, about so, 36, yeah. You know, it goes quicker uh, because I know what I'm doing. I've done this a bunch of times. Um, if this was a customer coming in here, I could easily charge up to $75 for doing that. Easy peasy. Um, and that's just money in the bank, man. I mean, if, if, that's, if this is my first job, I've already paid back more than, I've paid back about a third, what, right? I mean, it, a little less than a third of what I've spent yeah. on the whole deal to get into this game in the first place. So you do this four times and you're in the profits if you're buying the very basic tools. With that said, um, Matt made a good point a few seconds ago about um, pricing and things like that. If you're just getting going on this, you might get some close friends or use your own personal guitars to learn. Don't charge anything. Let them know, hey, I'm figuring this out as I go. Um, you know, uh, it might not be perfect. That way you can kind of, it's a no pressure kind of a situation. Um, if you're looking to start making money on it, you're going to need to kind of maybe feel it out. Maybe call some of your local music stores. Ask them how much the setup's going to cost. You know, hey, I've got a guitar. I'm trying to do a setup on it. What do you guys charge for that? Get a feel for what your local market is. I know for us um, down here in the panhandle of Florida, uh, we are about half as much our market price for doing setups, repairs, as it would be like in Nashville. 
you know, Nashville's crazy. Uh, what people have told me up there to do setups, it's like 150 bucks, $200 sometimes. So it depends on your local market space, just like many things. But uh, you need to ask around and figure that out. And, and, and if you're just looking to get business at first, man, don't charge much, $20. Hey, I'll come do a setup on your guitar for $20. You know, and you can stay here at the house while I do it real quick. Just things to consider. I can't necessarily tell you what you should be charging uh, to do the job, but uh, I would say safely between, uh, you know, $45 and $75, in my opinion, is what you should be getting to do basic setup work, plus the cost of if you need to put in new strings or anything like that. So uh, hopefully, you guys have seen that this is totally doable. Um, I, I want you guys to just always remember that on this channel, um, the main goal of this channel is to encourage you guys to to, 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 to do, not just to watch. Um, if you own guitars, you can apply all of these things to do it just for yourself if you'd like, and, and all the way up to the point where you can make it almost a living doing this sort of thing. All of these tools are very affordable. Um, we're putting links to them in the description. We're actually going to be putting Amazon affiliate links instead of the Stumac links, so that we can get a little bit of a, a little bit of a kickback on those guys. You can also obviously be welcome to buy them directly from Stumac if you're interested. And uh, go out there and do it, guys. Go out there and make some money. This is such a good way to get your feet wet into getting your hands dirty on guitars, whether it's acoustic or electric. And who knows, maybe within a year or two of doing that, you're going to want to learn how to build a guitar, which to me is what everybody should be doing. So hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next one. And hopefully you get to see this bad boy in a breakdown video real soon. Thanks, guys.